Hey guys, I'm Ava, and let's talk about Yu-Gi-Oh! Today, we are going to be looking at another budget deck. This time, it is specifically Prank Kids. This deck is a perfect candidate for budget decks because it is already so budget. A lot of the cards in this deck got reprinted in Maximum Gold Eldorado, so it was already fairly affordable, but now it is even cheaper because cards like Prank Kids Place got a lot cheaper as well, and I think Battle Butler got a little cheaper as well. So this whole deck only costs about $55, and that's not making a lot of sacrifices to it. Let's get into the deck and just talk a bit about how it's going to work. So Prank Kids, basically you want to combo off of one card with this deck and you're going to do that by summoning one of your Prank Kids and you can use Meow Meow to combo off of that. This card got hit pretty hard on the ban list and it's now limited to one, which did have a big impact on this deck. You do have to be a lot more thoughtful now with how you manage your resources, but I think you'll see that we've made some accommodations for that to help with the consistency of this deck and we will be able to recycle our meow meow with our nemesis corridor so first up all of our print kids in the main deck share one common effect which is if they are sent to the graveyard for a fusion or link summon you can special summon a print kids card from your hand or deck this is great because you'll pretty easily be able to cycle through all of their effects. They also each have one little bonus effect, which are also kind of like their pranks. So for example, Lampsies you can burn for 500, Dropsies you can gain 1000 life points, and Fancies lets you send something to the graveyard. So you're going to be wanting to use all of these cards every turn if you can, because you want to use their effects every turn. They are once per turn, so it's pretty easy to go through all four of them. And the burn and life point gain doesn't seem that significant, however it can make a big difference, especially the life point gain and just kind of make up for any differences uh, between you and your opponent or give you the lead in the game. So they're all fairly straightforward. Next up we have Nemesis Corridor. This card is in here so that we can get ourselves a Meow Meow back more easily. As you can see, you can target one of your banished monsters, add it back to the deck, in this case the extra deck, and also special summon this card, which is just really good. It can also be useful for link summoning, uh, but overall I think this card is really good to have in here. And because this card is in here, we are also going to be running Thunder Dragon Fusion, which will let us get out our Battle Butler more easily, who is our main boss of this deck. So after you get out your Battle Butler with Thunder Dragon Fusion, the next turn after this, when it's in the graveyard, you can banish it and then add Corridor to your hand, and that will let you recycle Meow Meow. So Meow Meow is so important because one, it's a link one, and also it has an effect in the graveyard where if you banish it, one of your prank kids monsters that requires a tribute to activate its effect doesn't have to be tributed. So this is gonna be really useful in combo with Battle Butler because its effect is so powerful. Basically, it lets you Raigeki. This is, however, in exchange for tributing it, but with Meow Meow, you can get around that and you can effectively Raigeki twice with Battle Butler. So you can see why it's super important. It's also useful for your other Prank Kids cards as well. It works with any of them that require tributing, so that is gonna go for your Rocket Ride, your Dodo Doodle, your Bow Wow Bark. It works for any of them that require being tributed for their effects to activate. Just a note, this has to be when it's your opponent's turn to work, but I don't think that's that big of a barrier. This card's effect is still really good. So next up in our deck, we have Effect Veiler. This is just gonna be a really good hand trap and it's super budget and it just works well in this deck. Next up, we have Forbidden Chalice. We're running two copies of this. It is a, another hand trap. We also have Pot of Desires. We're running two copies of this. This card's a bit iffy, but including Pot of Desires, will give you extra draw power and I thought it was worth it for the risk which is that you could banish your corridor. That's also why we are running two copies of corridor in case you banish one of them. Hopefully you aren't so unlucky that you banish both. We are also going to be running three copies of polymerization for obvious reasons because this is a fusion monster dependent deck and we will also be running a thunder dragon fusion which works well with corridor and also to get ourselves a battle butler. So that's why we are including that and it helps us recycle our cards and helps us get our Meow Meow back. Next up, we are running Prank Kids Pandemonium. We are going to run three copies of this. This card's really great. It lets you fusion summon a Prank Kids card with monsters from the hand or field. So it's effectively like polymerization. After you do this, you can only normal or special summon Prank Kids monsters for the rest of the turn. But also note that this card does not say once per turn. You could use this multiple times in a single turn, which is really great. Next up is Prank Kids Pranks, which is going to be good if we're in a fairly drawn out duel because you will be able to recycle a few of your cards and also get an extra draw. So that's fairly good as well. This gives us some additional draw power. Then we have our field spell, which is going to be Prank Kids Place. This card gives you an effect when you fusion or link summon a Prank Kids monster. 
and this depends on whether it's being link summoned or fusion summoned. If it is link summoned, your opponent's monsters lose 500 attack, and if you fusion summon a monster, yours gain 500 attack. Also note that when you activate this card, you can add a print kids monster from your deck to your hand, and we are effectively running four copies of this because we are also including terraforming, so it'll be fairly easy to get this out, and also some of your cards will let you search for spells, which we will get into later. Next, we are running one copy of Called by the Grave, one copy of Instant Fusion, because like I said, this is a fusion deck, so why not include it? We are running a Monster Reborn in case we need it, and we are also running two copies of There Can Be Only One. So this is going to be super great in our Print Kids deck because each of these cards is of a different type. So this gives you a huge advantage because as you can see, all of our Print Kids are different types, and these cards are also fairly diverse as well, so this is just going to be really good for us and a good floodgate for our opponent. If you want it to be a total degenerate, you could include Mystic Mine in this deck, but I am not going to do that because I want to maintain the few friends that I do have. So in terms of our extra deck, we have Battle Butler, which is going to be our boss, and it effectively lets us write Gucky. This will be really great if we can do that and also keep it on the field, but it's fairly easy to get out, and we are running two copies of Battle Butler. Also note that if your opponent does destroy it, you can special summon a non-fusion monster from your graveyard. Then we have Rocket Ride. So this card can let you go in for direct damage, but that's not super important. Also, you contribute it and get two prank kids back, so that's pretty useful. It just works pretty well. So next up, we have Weather Washer. This card is going to give us a bit of protection from our opponent's effects. If your prank kids is attacking, your opponent cannot activate any card effects until the end of the damage step, so that's pretty useful. And also, it has a bonus where you contribute it and also summon to print kids cards. So that is a common theme across these. And also note that if you use Weather Washer, they cannot be destroyed by battle this turn. This is gonna be really good for making sure we can have all of our print kids out every turn and use all of their effects. Because if you can burn for 500 damage and also gain a thousand life points each turn, that's gonna be really good. So then we have our two XZs monsters. First up, we have number 41 looking super cute there with those pillows. This card is just a good generic card to have. Then we are running Totally Awesome, which fits really well on this deck because Dropsies is a level two aqua. So it's going to work very well in here. Also note that Totally Awesome is probably the most expensive card in this deck, but it is not that expensive. I think last time I checked it was like $7, so not bad at all. Then we are going to go into our Link monsters. First up, we have Rip Roar and Roaster. This guy is a dragon and he looks super cool. Probably the only decent looking card in the extra deck. I do love the way the Roxy's, Lampsies, Dropsies, and Fancies look, but I'm not too keen on the extra deck monsters, but I think this guy actually looks pretty cool. So this will let you do some back row removal. So this is pretty useful because Battle Butler lets you remove monsters, Roar and Roaster lets you remove back row. So this will be good if you're playing against a deck that has a lot of traps, something like Eldritch. This will be pretty useful for that, especially if you have Meow Meow, because you'll probably want to use this effect more than once. So if your opponent does destroy this card, you do also get an effect, which is you can add a card from your graveyard to your hand, which is pretty solid. Then we have ourselves Nightmare Unicorn, and we will also be running Nightmare Phoenix. Both of these are just really good generic link monsters, so you're seeing them in here because they're also fairly cheap, especially after the reprint. Then we are running Print Kids Dodo Doodle Do. You might also want to run three copies of this depending on your deck. Maybe if you don't have Totally Awesome, you could run a third copy of this, but basically this lets you search your spell and traps. So this is going to be really good if you need to get yourselves a Print Kids Pandemonium. This is the way to do it. You can also attribute it to add two print kids cards from your graveyard to your hand, so that's fairly good, but I think the main appeal of this is going to be that first effect, which will let you get out Pandemonium, because that is very solid. Unfortunately, it is only once per turn, so you couldn't just loop this and loop this into Pandemonium multiple times, but still, overall, a very good card. Then we are going to be running two copies of Bow Wow Bark, and this will let you get a thousand point attack bump, and also you can tribute this and add two print kids monsters from your graveyard to your hand. This is excluding links, but you could use this with fusions. So next up, Nightmare Phoenix, we already talked about, and then Meow Meow Moo. So this card is super solid, we've already talked about it, but basically this is going to be our launching off point, and it's pretty crucial to this deck, so we are fairly weak against things like Ash Blossom, so that is one downfall of this deck, and it has definitely affected the consistency of the deck that this was limited to one. 
but hopefully with our corridor, we will have access to this fairly consistently because this is going to be super useful for our deck. However, overall, I think this is still a really solid deck. It's actually really fun to play too, and I think the card art is super cute for it. Aside from just being really fun to play and look at, it is fairly easy to get the hang of. You do have to be careful with how you manage your resources, but your card order isn't super crucial, especially when you're talking about the main deck cards. You should be able to get into your combos fairly easy with those, and overall, I think you should have very consistent first hands. You shouldn't be breaking too often with this deck because you only really need one prank kid to combo off of, and you have other cards that will help you out if you don't draw any prank kids. Okay, just a reminder that you can download this deck list below, and also please subscribe to my channel if you like this video. It would really mean a lot. I really want to get to 500 by the end of the year, and also comment below what you think I could add to this deck to make it better. Do you think that I should be running Pot of Desires? That's what I'm wondering about because it's a bit iffy when you are relying on things like Corridor, but I think overall it's a good addition and please like this video if you enjoyed it and I will see you guys next time. Thank you so much for watching. Goodbye.